The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Good day. Armenak Abrahamian speech dedicated to the 155th anniversary of Komitas. It is our right to live and preserve the cultural heritage of Western Armenia. September 27, the fourth anniversary of the Second War in Artsakh. Masses and French Exxon province became sister cities. Sons of Western Armenia, Israel already. Four years after the war, there are still unburied soldiers, fathers. The number of victims in Lebanon has exceeded 600. Vasilis Palmas visited the memorial complex of the victims of the genocide committed against Armenians. President Armenia Gabriel's speech dedicated to the 155th anniversary of Komitas Vartapet. Today is an important day. We are here to celebrate the 155th anniversary of Komitas Vartapet. Komitas is not only one of the greatest figures of Armenian music, but also one of the symbols of our national identity. He was born in the land that is still struggling for its existence, rights and culture. It is Western Armenia. We live in a time when it is more important than ever to protect our rights. Armenians of Artsakh as Armenians in Western Armenia are an indigenous people, not a minority. They are struggling in order for the world to recognize them as indigenous people, demanding the right that every person has to live and survive on their own land. Our right is the same as all people should have, to live, develop and preserve our culture, religious and tradition. We are working within the framework of the United Nations to protect our rights and restore the wealth that belongs to us in Western Armenia. Our heritage, our land, our culture are the cornerstones of our spiritual and material values, which we must preserve and pass on to the next generations. Komitas music is a key part of our culture, the foundation of our identity. Listening to his music, we communicate with our national spiritual and cultural heritage, which exists for thousands of years. Today I speak Armenian, a language whose roots go back centuries, a language that is alive and that we must preserve and pass on. I am Armenian and this language is an integral part of my identity. We are not a religious minority, but an indigenous people whose existence dates back long before Christianity. We have the legacy of Tigran the Great, which reminds us of our powerful and independent historical Armenia. We have not only had the powerful state, but we also have a rich language, culture, religion and tradition that we are obliged to protect and preserve. Today, listening to Komitas music, we not only enjoy his works, but also restore and reaffirm our culture and identity, said the President, Mr. Armena Abrahamian. September 27 marks the fourth anniversary of the start of the Second War in Artsakh. Four years ago, on this very day, the war began, which lasted 44 days. That was one of the most difficult challenges for Armenian people in Artsakh. Baku, with Turkey's support, launched a large-scale military operation using rockets, artillery, heavy weapons, drones, and prohibited weapons, including against the civilian population. After the attack, Baku captured the Hadrut region of Artsakh, Shushi, as well as the adjacent southern regions under Armenian control. Both sides suffered huge losses during the war. Thousands of soldiers and civilians were killed and many more injured. Hostilities ceased on 9 November 2020, when a trilateral declaration was signed between Eastern Armenia, Azerbaijan and Russia. Within the framework of this agreement, Azerbaijan also took control of the remaining territories of seven regions, adjacent to Artsakh, which were under the control of Armenian forces until then. The course of the war, fall of Jabrail in the second week of the war, loss of Hadrut in the third week, the entry of Azerbaijani forces into Shushi's strongholds in the fifth week of the war that ultimately led to Shushi's fall. An agreement was signed between the enlarged community of Masis and the French city of Exxon province to become sister cities. Based on the establishment of official diplomatic relations between France and Armenia on the 24th of February 1992, as well as the warm, friendly relations formed between the two communities, strong relations and cooperative activities, both sides agreed. Guided by the principles of fairness and impartiality, with the aim of deepening relations, the city of Exxon province and the extended community of Masis undertake. Encourage and develop the exchange of experience and implement joint projects for the benefit of local development, particularly in the fields of youth and education, 
culture, solidarity, sustainability, economy, innovative technologies, security, and sports in accordance with the established relations between our two countries. The parties signing the agreement will also encourage the development of partnership and friendly relations between the citizens of the two communities. Israel Ori devoted most of his life to ensuring the support of European powers in creating independence for the Armenian people in their homeland. He was born in 1658 in Syung, southern Armenia, and he came from a noble family. He traveled around Europe and appealed to various princes and leaders, asking them to help on the issue of Armenia's independence. With the same problem, he also appealed to the Pope of Rome, the Elector of the Palatinate, the Emperor Leopold of Austria, the Duke of Tuscany, the advisors of the King of France, Louis XIV, and the Russian Prince Peter the Great. Although Ori died without achieving his goals, his dedication to the cause of Armenia's independence became the for a new era of many national liberation movements in the following centuries, including the struggle for a free and independent Armenia. Jovavurt daily writes that four years after the 44-day war, there are still 88 DNA identified by Tambarid remains of soldiers in the morgues. The parents of the victims refused to accept the result of the DNA examination, not trusting the relevant authorities and considering that the obtained data are far from reality. Taguito Maisan, chairman of the Human Rights Protection Committee of the National Assembly of Eastern Armenia, noted that some parents were given relics with inconsistent physical data. In addition, there were cases when parents found out that their son was captured but his name was not included in the list. As a result of Israel air strikes, the number of victims in Lebanon has exceeded 600 and the Lebanese government announced, informing that the attack that began on Monday continues. Lebanon reports that nine members of one family were killed, including four children from an airstrike today. Hezbollah, condemned as a terrorist by the West, also announces that in response to the Israeli attacks, they launched rockets in the direction of Israel. The Reuters agency writes, and although the Israel site neutralized many rockets, normal life in the northern region of Israel is disrupted. The United States, France, and a number of other countries propose an immediate 21-day ceasefire. The proposal is being discussed, the Prime Minister of Israel announced today. After Benjamin Netanyahu's departure to New York, his office issued a statement stating that the Prime Minister instructed the armed forces to continue operations with full force. The Ministry of Defense of Cyprus, Vasilis Palmas, visited the memorial site of the victims of the genocide committed against Armenians and paid tribute to the memory of the victims. The minister laid a ref at the memorial and laid flowers near the eternal fire that perpetuates the memory of the victims of the genocide committed against Armenians. Dear viewers, this was all for today. I wish you good weekend. Goodbye.